Yo, what's going on guys? Now, for those of you who don't know, about one month ago, I released a video where I got coaching from a professional coach. His name is Xpia, and he is the coach of the RLCS team, Team Liquid. In that video, I explained that every month I would make a video for the next six months covering what we learned and what I was taught. Today's video is covering what we went over in the second month of training, and this month was completely focused on speed. So, today you are going to learn from a professional coach how to get faster in Rocket League. I know this is a topic that a lot of people wonder about in general, but there are actually a few things to focus on and a few ways to train this. And so I'm sure this video is going to be very helpful to a lot of you. But first, something I have wanted to announce for a very long time, and I finally can. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have merch. That's right, if you head over to thanovic.com, you can pick up some merch for yourself. I am really, really happy with the design and I hope you guys love it. There's t-shirts, hoodies, a blanket even, and actually my favorite item on the list is this cream hoodie with the cherry blossoms down one of the sleeves. But that is a limited time only item and will only be around for three weeks. So make sure to get in fast. Anyway, that is my big exciting news. Let's get back to the video. Something I do want to say before you hear this advice is that you cannot half learn something. The best way to go about learning something new is to throw yourself fully into it. You can't learn how to play fast and slow at the same time. And so the best way is to just fully play fast. And whenever you think you have reached a good level, that's when you can start to pull it back a bit and choose your moments. Fully commit while learning and then with learning comes understanding of when it is needed. But while you're learning, don't restrict yourself by trying both slow and fast play styles at once. But that being said, let's get straight into it. How to play Rocket League faster by Thanovic and Xpeer, but mostly Xpeer. Now, the first thing we looked at was basic speed around the map. This was something that I thought I was already pretty good at, but as per usual, when you bring a high level coach into the mix, you start to realize where you aren't as onto it as you once thought. Going over my games and looking at general speed, the very, very first thing I was told was about my kickoff. Whenever I was the second man on kickoff and cheating up, I would already play too passively. The goal of the player cheating up is to be ready to pressure immediately, knowing that whatever happens, there is already the third man on the team who is back on defense and currently has a 100 boost. So there is no real need for me to play so passively. Saying that, I always did, and so the first thing Xpeer told me to work on is pushing up a little more when cheating up and applying more pressure. This will more often than not make you the first one on the ball directly after kickoff and can lead to instant offensive pressure from the start or it can lead you to getting the full boost from the middle boost pad straight away. Either way, it is a very quick way to apply instant pressure to the opponent and speed up your gameplay. Now, the next thing that came from this general movement was flipping around the field. This one makes you feel like when you go into that monkey mentality of non-stop boosting and flipping and being everywhere at once, and that's good. That's the way you want to feel. What Xpeer noticed in my gameplay was that there were many times where I'd be driving back over a few boost pads and not really being at my optimal speed. I didn't really have a good reason for this, I was just a kind of autopilot thing. He explained that I did this a lot when I was trying to rotate back and be the third man. And so to make it clear that I was rotating outwards from the play while also conserving boost and while gaining speed, I needed to be flipping towards boost pad and turning ball cam on and off to keep track of the ball. Now that might be a little too much information for people to understand all in one go and so I'm going to quickly break it down for you. Let's say I am the first man. I have just taken a shot on the goal and I've missed. I now know that there are two other players on my team who can both see the ball and whose immediate reaction will be to follow up and try to get possession or try to get another shot. So. I rotate outwards, which just means I am rotating away from the direction of the play. This is to make sure that I'm not going to get in the way of my teammates and will also tell them that I am moving behind them into a third man position so they are safe to play aggressively. While doing this, I should be either diagonally flipping or front flipping over the boost pads so I am collecting boost while also picking up speed. And at the same time, I am turning my ball cam on and off so I can track where the ball is on the field. Now this last part is especially important because it would allow me, as the third man, to quickly apply pressure if the situation calls for it. This leads into our next mini point, which is about this pressure as the third man, because I think this ties in with speed quite nicely. If you rotate all the way back to your corner to get full boost as the third man every single time, you are not helping your team and you are not pressuring the play. The point of switching ball cam on and off as you make your way back is so that you can turn towards the play around the halfway line 
so that you are close enough to help out if your current first man misses their shot. If they miss, you are now one of the two players on your team that can move in and try to challenge for possession. Now, instead of that, imagine if you had gone all the way back to your corner for boost in this situation. Instead of fighting for possession, you now have one teammate rotating back after missing, one teammate who has pushed up the field, you back in net, kind of just waiting, and three opponents who have gotten the rebound and have a lot of unpressured space to work with. So, in order to play faster and have more presence on the field, you need to pick up a few boost pads, then turn and get yourself back into the action. Having 100 boost in your back corner will not make you faster than someone who grabbed 50 boost and stayed upfield to help. The enemy is going to have a much harder time dealing with the pressure if you are constantly in their face. So just make sure you are flipping around the field to build up your speed and going over boost pads. And then make sure you're staying present in the game and not going all the way back to your corner while you're attacking. The next thing I want to talk about is aerials. Now I have mentioned it a little bit in the past, but the main thing XP was noticing in my gameplay was that I was being too hesitant when going up for an aerial. I was waiting, taking my time and making sure that I was going to connect with the ball before I took off. My thought process behind this was, well, if I go up and miss, then it's going to be a waste anyway, so I probably should play it safer and take my time. But while that might sound good, this isn't really the right mindset to have while trying to improve. When it comes down to it, this one ranked match means literally nothing a week down the track. If you go up for a ball immediately, miss it, and the opponent scores, Yes, you might lose the match, but you're getting more and more comfortable going up for the ball with pace. The more often you go up, the better you become at reading the ball at that speed and adjusting yourself as you go for it. It's never about whether you win or lose the game. It's about whether you aim to improve or not. If your goal is to improve as a player, then you go up without hesitation every single time, because this will build you up long term. And yes, you might miss the ball every single time, but as you learn and get used to the speed, you start connecting with the ball and then you start hitting the ball where you want to, and then a week or two down the line, those games that you originally lost because you were missing the ball aren't gonna matter because now you aren't hesitating. Now you're hitting the ball. Now you're getting into the air faster than your opponents and you're catching them off guard. If you wanna improve your general speed in the air, you have got to stop hesitating and you've got to let go of the idea that missing is a bad thing. In the short term scope of things, yes, missing that one aerial is not great, but in the long term, you are training yourself to get used to the speed and how to control your car in the air at that speed. So, do not worry about mistakes. They happen to everyone, it is fine. If you see yourself going up quickly and not hesitating, I promise there will be a lot of aerial improvement very quickly. This took me about two weeks to really understand and get down, and now I still might catch myself hesitating every now and then, but my general aerial speed has gotten a lot better. The last thing I want to talk about are different ways you can train yourself to play faster outside of actual gameplay. Now we all know the drills like hitting the ball around the field as fast as you can in free play and turning off unlimited boost and learning the boost pad locations, but something you can and you definitely should do with a friend is to jump into an unlimited boost 1v1 match. What this is going to force you to do is to stay moving non-stop, challenge the ball at weird times and have you flying around the field in weird positions. But it's also going to make your recoveries 10 times better in the long run. Now I know I haven't covered recoveries in today's video because it's been done a hundred times before and a few times on this channel honestly, but playing with a limited boost on, throwing yourself at every ball and forcing yourself to recover quickly, whether that's on the ground, on the wall or even on the ceiling, is going to get you more in tune with your car in those last second recovery moments and it's going to passively train you to have better recoveries long term. This unlimited boost training method is also going to get you to work with the walls a lot faster. If the ball goes up, you can very quickly aerial from the wall to the ball and try to maintain control. Just like in a normal game where you might find the ball is in the air and you're near the wall. If you were like me when I started out this month, I would normally play it safe and just kind of wait back until I could get a solid hit. But after this training, I find myself having a much easier time going straight up the wall and aerialing immediately to counterattack or to at least put pressure back onto the opponents. These unlimited boost matches are the best way to get you to overcome your hesitation and should be used as often as you can when trying to deal with slow aerials. Now, the next thing you can do, which also kind of ties into that, is boomer mode. This one is pretty much like unlimited boost, but it's going to help you with reading the ball and reading the ball bounces. 
However, it's not really needed, but can just be an additional thing you add on if you ever want to mess around with your friends. Once again, you want to be going up quickly and trying to get rid of any hesitation. Remember, missing the ball is completely fine, it will only benefit you in the long run. Don't get upset, if you can't understand it, if you can't get the read, it's fine. It all takes time and you are helping yourself long term. The last thing is just a small thing to remember as you are playing, and that is to not stop boosting while you're going up for an aerial. This wasn't touched on earlier because I wanted to make sure it was one of the last things you hear so you really remember it. Hold down boost when going up for the ball. This will make sure you have the best chance of getting to the ball first and will give you the best chance of actually impacting the play. There is no need to feather your boost when you're working on your speed. When committing to a ball, have zero hesitation and hold down boost. Sooner or later, you will start to naturally iron out your mistakes and you'll end up in a much better position and a much faster player afterwards. But that will wrap it up for today's video. If you were after more advice on how to play fast or more advice in general, the 30 days with a pro coach video we released last month also has a few tips on how to play fast that I didn't include because I didn't really want to double up. But definitely do go check that out. Thank you very much to Xperia for another month of coaching. For those of you who were interested in what we're currently learning and what next month's video will be, we will be taking a deeper look into rotations, which I am really excited about. Also, for those of you who were wanting some coaching from Xperia yourself, he does coach over on Medify, and so you can use the code Thandivik for 20% off. The link to his coaching services will be in the description. And just one last time, I wanted to say, if you are interested, please do go check out the merch at Thandivik.com. The team did such a good job, and I'm so proud of all of it. The link to that will also be in the description, and it will be the pinned comment. But anyway, that is all from me. I'll see you next time.